So over this past weekend, there was a lot of talk about piracy and emulation on social media. If you're following a lot of gaming-centered accounts on Twitter and that, you've certainly seen it. And it largely stemmed from a Kotaku article that was basically hyping up and promoting piracy of the latest Nintendo game, Metroid Dread. I can already hear your little sausage finger slapping the keyboard. Oh, emulation doesn't mean piracy. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about that. With a lot of people watching the success or failure of Dread uh, and its implication for future games, I did a video saying it's, I think, the most important game of the year because it may get us not just more Metroid games, but similar games also getting AAA treatment. And because of this, it's no surprise many weren't happy with them focusing on dread of all games with this sort of article. And before I even get into the whole, you know, emulation, pirating games, etc. talk, because I think this discussion is devolving, like, straight into those debates, like, you know, the ethics of pirating and all that, I just want to focus on the article. Right off the bat, as Kotaku started getting a bunch of hate about this article, they quickly went in and changed a lot of things, okay? So you're gonna read this article now, it's a lot different. You'll see people in the comments talking about things they changed, saying things like, you know, thank God for pirating. I wish I would've took screenshots of what they first put up, I really do, uh, because like, I couldn't find this screenshot, but I've seen people specifically talking about how when it first came out, the first line of the article, the opening was like, oh, if, if you're a Nintendo lawyer, please don't read this, you know, trying to be funny, something like that. They, of course, took that out after uh, they started getting all this hate. But still, but even still, this is basically a review of emulator versions of Metroid Dread, talking about how you can, you know, run it in 4K, higher frame rates, and you don't even need that powerful of a computer. Also giving readers links to those emulators, uh, without even talking about, again, the ethics of emulators in that, Nintendo, for sure, does not want you playing these games on an emulator. Uh, no matter what, they want you buying the game and playing it on their system that you also bought. So, in that way, it just seems odd for a major game publication to be promoting this method in such a way. Uh, like, there's no way Nintendo is going to be happy about that, especially with this being a brand new game. If I ran the company, you know, Nintendo, I can tell you I'd be planning on Kotaku's future review copies, perhaps getting lost in the mail. Like, even if you're all for this stuff, do you think Nintendo is going to be? Now, I think it's worth pointing out that if anything does come of this, you know, Nintendo gets them a review copy late in the future or doesn't send it at all, if something like that happens when they cry about it, you can show them this article and be like, D did you think you were going to get rewarded for this? Just at face value seems like a really stupid thing for a big gaming news outlet to do. Again, regardless of how you feel about emulation, pirating, and that. Now still, before we talk about pirating through emulators, there are people mentioning that, like I said at the top, you don't have to necessarily pirate a game to play it on an emulator. You can dump your own ROM. Even if you download a ROM off the internet, if you already bought the game, it's not really a big deal ethically. It's not like the article itself tells you to go download the Dread ROM illegally or where to do that. Well, no shit. If they did that, if the Kotaku had links like, hey, here's where you can go grab a Dread ROM, I could assure you that Nintendo would be on their asses over this article. People using this argument of, oh, you know, you could be someone who owns the game and you're using an emulator. You guys, you honestly sound like politicians. Is it possible? Are there people making this ethical use of emulators, using it for just products that they bought? Sure. Is it the majority of people? Half of people? Hell no. The majority of people are not using emulators for games they bought, especially for current gen games, you know, the Switch. They're downloading the ROMs for free and playing them through emulators. If you're not aware, the sharing of ROMs is the main legal issue. That's why when you buy like clone consoles with hard drives uh, to load games up on or something, you know, a type of boxed emulator, they don't come with games installed. You have to, you know, they'll, they'll sell you the emulator, but you have to go get the ROMs. 
because if they sold you, say, a knockoff SNES Classic with, you know, a bunch of games installed on it, that's where they could be sued into the Stone Age. Even though that's not what you're supposed to be doing with it, okay, everyone with a brain, everyone who's being honest knows what people actually do with emulators. That's why I say, you know, you sound like a politician when you bring that up as an excuse. As if with Dread, Metroid Dread, all of the people running this two days old game on an emulator also bought it themselves. Playing Metroid Dread on an emulator for free is just about as easy, maybe even easier, than buying it and dumping your own ROM. So like, come on, do you, do you really believe that? Let's be real, don't give me this, oh, using an emulator isn't necessarily pirating crap. Yeah, the pirating, that's just like what 95% of people are going to do with it. We should focus on the 5% that are buying all the games that they emulate. Give me, just give me a break. Which brings us to actual piracy. Because this does have a lot of people that are on one side or the other, absolutists. Uh, people being like, I pirate every game, I pirate every movie, all my entertainment, even all my manga, I pirate. You know, maybe if you guys weren't such bums, they could afford to print manga properly so it didn't read backwards. And there are people who don't think you should ever pirate anything, no matter the circumstance. Uh, to those people, you know, if, if you want to pay some random dude $200 for a GameCube game that's been out of print for two decades that uh, <laughs> the developers, people responsible for making it, don't even see a dime for, I guess, go nuts? You know, I myself, I see this as a very gray issue. Uh, the first question I always ask is, like I alluded to, is the rights holder even trying to make money off this game when I talk about pirating? Which is why I think it's not just justified, but downright important for the preservation of old games. Uh, many classics aren't made available to play on modern hardware, so if you want to play an official version, you're going to have to pay big money to a third party. Like I said, nobody involved with the actual creation of that game gets a dime anyway, so I think it's pretty stupid to have this absolutist mindset about piracy is bad. Like, people should be able to access and experience these classics without a bunch of roadblocks. If these companies don't want to do that for them, then yeah, they should go this alternate route. But that's certainly not the case with Dread, a game that just came out a few days ago. You can easily get this game in whatever format you want, physical, digital, etc. So in my view, you shouldn't be pirating it. Now, I'm not going to call the cops on you if you tell me you are, but I'm definitely not for it. Uh, again, if you're someone who bought it and just wants to play the emulated version, have fun. I'd even go as far to say if the game was like a buggy mess and somehow the emulator version made it run smooth, even though typically the emulated versions of games are rougher performance-wise or need a really powerful rig to improve performance, if that was the case, then I'd say people, even big news sites like Kotaku, maybe they should be promoting the emulator so people can play something that's not a broken mess. While this isn't my review for Dread or anything like that, I can assure you this game is far from broken or buggy by any means. So again, it's not something I'd support the piracy of. And I do think Kotaku knew what they were doing here, not just in terms of promoting piracy. I think that that should be clear. Uh, but when you ask why of all games Metroid Dread just after release, because yeah, I don't remember them doing this with like any other big games at release. Kotaku is clearly, it's a, an outlet on the downtrend, all the big names have long left, and all they can really do to stay relevant is drum up drama, and I'm sure they're aware of many people like me talking about how important it is for this game to do well, uh, what it could mean for the future of, again, not just this franchise, but games like this getting similar treatment, so surely talking about pirating it was going to get a lot of reactions. In that regard, mission accomplished, I guess, Kotaku. You got people to talk about your worthless website, uh, even if it is just calling you an embarrassment to the industry as usual. Uh, take what you can get, I guess. Myself, you, you might say, oh, well, then you're just giving them the attention they want. Yeah, I really, I'm sorry, I can't pass on an opportunity to call Kotaku an embarrassment. I, I just can't. And with the whole pirating deal, as I hope I made clear, it's not just about a pirating method. Even though, yes, I'm sure you can find 10 people who own the game and are emulating it. It's more about 
a big gaming news outlet promoting this pirating method. Like I said, talking about how great it is in that and how clear they made it, especially in the original article, what they were actually talking about. And I sure hope they remember this if Nintendo does decide to treat them differently in the future. I'll, I think that'll be hilarious. Anyway, with that, this video's a wrap. Let me know your thoughts on this whole Metroid Dread emulator controversy in the comments. What is your stance on pirating games? When do you think it's appropriate, if ever? Uh, do you think people should be pirating Metroid Dread? Are you one of these people who thinks everyone emulating games already owns them all? As always, I'm the Shy Guy Johnny Zakari, and thanks for watching.